So as a part of uh, this discussion, we'll start our discussion with the classification of bacteria. Uh, there are many ways by which bacteria are actually classified. Um, but uh, if we take the entire uh, um, microorganisms, the microorganisms are basically, um, in fact, all the organisms on the earth are divided into five kingdoms, as you should be aware. Uh, first one is Monera. So, which includes all your um, uh, bacteria. And then uh, you have protista. So this is all organisms on earth, okay? So all organisms on earth are divided into five categories. Monera, protista, which includes uh, protozoans. That's your uh, amoeba, paramecium, euglena, etc. Then you have fungi. Then uh, you have um, uh, plantae, That's all the plants are included here. And then you have animalia, animals. So whenever we talk about uh, um, bacteria, we are referring to this category, Monera. Okay, so the bacteria are classified, like I said, on the basis of uh, different characteristics. Um, for instance, um, you have a classification based on their shape. Then you have classification based on um, an important staining procedure of bacteria called gram staining. Right. Then um, they can also be classified based on um, uh, not just the presence, but um, the arrangement of flagella. Right arrangement of flagella. Um, now there are several, several ways uh, they are actually uh, classified. They're also classified based on their nutritional habits. Okay, so there are many classifications. We'll start off with the first one where bacteria are actually classified based on their shape. Okay, so Classification of bacteria based on their shape. So if you take uh, class bacteria based on their shape, you have, um, they're classified into cocci. So cocci are spherical shaped, right? Then uh, these uh, cocci, they can be arranged in the form of pairs. So one is spherical, then you can be, you can see them arranged in the form of pairs. These are called diplococci. So these are uh, pairs of cocci. Then you have um, the same cocci can be arranged in the form of chains. Okay, if they are arranged in the form of chains, they're called streptococci. Then in the form of, uh, instead of uh, being arranged in the form of chains, if they're arranged in the form of uh, a bunch, like, uh, you know, a bunch of grapes, uh, right? Like a bunch of grapes, then we call them uh, staphylococci. Then um, these are all spherical. Then you have a uh, rod shape, so something like this. Okay, so if they are rod shaped, then we call them bacilli. Okay, so bacillus is rod shaped. So um, in the same way, you have streptobacillus where, where you have chains of bacilli. Okay, streptobacilli, where you have chains of bacilli. Then uh, you have some certain special uh, other shapes, um, uh, which is comma shaped. Comma shaped is your vibrio. This is, 
this is a unique feature of uh, this bacteria. It, it appears just like a comma. Okay, so um, Vibrio is comma shape. Then um, you have um, uh, a spirillum shape. So a twisted kind of a, a shape. And uh, so basically this has spiral shape. And the spiral uh, shaped bacteria, a good example is your uh, uh, spirillum. Uh, so you have many examples. For instance, this is spirochete. Right, spirochete is a good example for uh, the spiral shaped bacteria. So this, this is uh, basically classification based on the shape of the bacteria. Then you have classification based on uh, the staining, gram staining. Okay, so Christian Graham, uh, a scientist actually came up with a staining procedure um, for bacteria. And uh, the observation was after following all these steps, right? After following all these steps, um, the bacteria will appear either in purple or blue color, right? That's one, one possibility. Okay, and the other possibility is they may appear pink or red in color. So you have two options, uh, uh, two outcomes, not options, two outcomes. So when you follow this gram staining procedure, so basically what, will, what it will involve is, first you apply crystal violet. So these are the steps which are actually involved in gram staining. So crystal violet is a dye, which as the name suggests has a violet or a blue color. Okay, so because of this, what will happen is all the bacteria, so this is your bacteria, this will actually pick up the, the crystal violet. So that's the first stage. So it will pick up the crystal violet completely and it will turn. Um, so all the bacteria um, will turn blue. Okay, so in order to stabilize this color, in order to make sure that um, this, the color actually stays there, we add in the next step, we add um, something called um, um, iodine. <clears throat> so in the next step, we add iodine, which is a mordant, which will actually ensure that the crystal violet actually stays in the cell. Okay, so this is a mordant. Then uh, the next step would be alcohol wash. Okay, so you wash the cells, you wash the slide with the alcohol. Okay, now this step is critical. Okay, this step is critical because the bacterial cells can be of two types. One back, so you, the, uh, in, in terms of structure, okay, in, the, in terms of cell wall structure, you can have two types. One type of bacterial cells have a lot of peptidoglycan in them, in the cell wall. Okay, a lot of peptidoglycan in the cell wall. And when you put alcohol, uh, nothing basically changes there. Okay, nothing basically changes there because peptidoglycan is uh, not something that dissolves in alcohol. On the other hand, there are other bacteria whose cell wall, okay, predominantly contains, in addition to the peptidoglycan, very thin layer of peptidoglycan, predominantly contains lipids. Okay, the lipopolysaccharides. So what will happen here is, immediately, these lipids, which are easily dissolvable in alcohol, they'll be washed away. So pores are created. Okay, so pores are created. Now, after alcohol wash, so depending on the type of bacteria, you can have two outcomes. One, the crystal violet dye will actually stay inside the cell if the cell wall is actually made up of, if the cell wall has predominantly peptidoglycan. On the other hand, if the cell wall has predominantly, if, if the cell wall is predominantly made up of lipids, then the alcohol will remove the lipids and make it more porous. Okay, so next, what, next step what we are doing is we add saffron dye. 
Okay, Safranin. Safranin. And this Safranin is red in color. Okay, so what will happen now is, so imagine a slide. Okay, and uh, let's imagine um, bacterial cells. Right, let's imagine bacterial cells. And um, this, let's say this bacterial cell is actually made up of, uh, this has a lot of peptidoglycan in its cell wall. So the peptidoglycan will be picked up by this bacteria, the, the crystal violet will be picked up by this bacterial cell. The iodine will actually fix the uh, crystal violet. It won't allow the crystal violet to um, be washed away. Then this bacterial cell on the other hand, it will pick up the crystal violet in the first step. Uh, the iodine might actually stabilize it, but then you're washing with alcohol. The lipid is being dissolved. Now it is becoming porous and all the crystal violet dye, which is, which was earlier picked up by the cell is now washed away. Okay. So now the cell in the last step, if you are adding safranin, so the safranin will now be picked up by these cells and now they'll be in red or pink color. Okay. So all those cells which are in purple or blue color, they are considered to be gram positive. Okay, so these are gram positive. And all those cells at the end of uh, um, gram staining, if you see them in pink or red color, they are gram negative. Okay, so that is how the gram staining works. Okay, so you just uh, uh, take a slide. Um, so just give me a second. Let me just see. I'll just share the image with you. <clears throat> 